So what do we know about the killer? We know that particularly with the Gilgo Four, uh, he contacted those women via internet ads. We know that he had told some victims not to bring their cell phones. We know that from Amber's roommate, who said that he had told her specifically not to bring a cell phone. We know from a couple of different um, uh, uh, stories that he, he promised them a lot of money, $1,000, $1,500 for the night. Probably the biggest clue is, that we have right now uh, that we know of is that we know that he called the victim's sister and boyfriend and taunted them a lot. Unfortunately, none of these calls were recorded, um, but we know that the calls were placed from Midtown Manhattan and the South Shore of Long Island, very close to where the bodies were found. And he also, he used a lot of terms um, that were, he used a term called half-breed, and which is something that is uh, something that an older racist person would say, basically. <laughs> you Very know, offensive. Bottom line. Very yeah. offensive. Yeah. Not yes. politically correct. O older racists as opposed to newer racists. So, <laughs> so, you know, trying to get it from that and, the, and, you know, talking with that chief of detectives, knowing that the language that he used, I remember him saying like, oh, that wasn't a cop. Remember him telling us that? Like, that, the language that he used with her, with her sister, her sister, that wouldn't have been a cop. It was like, have you ever heard cops talk? Cops can talk cops like that. on Long Island still say the word broad. <laughs> like, you have no idea how many times I heard that word when we were making this project. I was like, they still use that word? <laughs> yeah, so, so the, the idea that like that wasn't a thing is that, yeah. So this is what we know about the killer. So here's what law enforcement has told us. Uh, they have this, uh, they found this belt and they said that the a killer had handled this belt. This came out in 2020 in two different waves, incredibly frustrating, A, that they waited 10 years to show us this belt because people die, people move away. Uh, the first thing that they did to show us this belt was they didn't show us the pictures that are on, for me, on the right there of, um, of what the belt looked like. All they did was show us those initials. Um, so they did it in a way that you had no idea how big those initials were or whatever. It turns out the initials were very small. Um, well, we but thought this, it was going to be a huge belt. We, we thought, it, yeah, <laughs> we had no idea. It's got to be gigantic. Look, yeah. at this, look at this sign she's holding up. Yeah. That's all she said. <laughs> I mean, this is how show. frustrating the police department is in this one, right? Ten years later, they show us a little, a piece of, a, you know, a picture of the belt, and then six months later, they do a press conference, and then they show us a little bit more of the belt. Why? All right, so this is a call to action for all you citizen detectives out there. Still don't know where potentially this, uh, what this logo means, what these initials mean. It's a very interesting font. There's a lot of people online trying to talk about who it might be, um, but really just trying to find out where the belt might have come from is a way that could get us close to the killer. I'm also skeptical as to whether they even have the belt. They keep showing photos of it. I don't see why they wouldn't show the belt. Show us the belt. If you're trying to see if somebody recognizes this belt, why wouldn't you show a whole picture of the belt? Why are we just seeing this little yeah. tab of leather in yeah. initials? It just seems very counterproductive. If you, if you have the belt and you're trying to get the public to identify the object, why would you not show it to them? It, it's incredibly bizarre. So what have they told us about Peaches and the baby? Now, Peaches, um, which is uh, her torso, was found at Hempstead Lake State Park in sort of a Rubbermaid container. The rest of her body parts were found later um, along Jones Beach, which is along Ocean Parkway, but it's on the Nassau County side. So we know a little bit more about Peaches because Nassau was a little bit more open with sharing information than Suffolk County was. Um, Peaches, and then they later found the remains of an infant who turns out to have been Peaches' baby. Now, the victimology on this is definitely um, different because you had a woman and a baby, and also this is the only, of the 10 that we've been talking about, this is the only person of color. They, they describe Peaches as being black. Um, this is the tattoo. They've located, I think, who the tattoo artist uh, was, but doesn't remember anything really about the woman now. But another call to action for uh, you citizen sleuths out there, um, this is the only bit of clothing or anything like that other than the belt that we know that was found at the crime scene. And both Peaches and the baby were wearing these items. Now, 
They have said that the items, we don't know where they were purchased. They were said that the items were possibly from maybe like a, you know, like a drug store. Um, so looking through maybe like wholesale catalogs. This isn't something that um, would be at a high end place or even like a K Jewelers or something like that. So uh, Citizen Sleuths want to go through like wholesale catalogs from even the, the 60s or 70s. They could have been hand-me-downs, we don't know. But this is another thing that maybe if you can, if you can lay out where these were sold and what location we can get closer to who Peaches was and then maybe if, even if this case is not um, uh, connected with the other eight, we could still get something closer to resolution for that. So the bulk of our project really spotlights the secrecy of the Suffolk County Police Department when it comes to the Long Island serial killer case. But we were given the opportunity to interview several of the upper brass at the time. And we were able to glean some information. So we know that they're using genetic genealogy to try to identify victims. And they were successfully able to do that with Valerie Mack, who was identified recently. So presumably, they're trying to do the same with Peaches and the infant and the Asian male. Um, we know from the former district attorney, Tim Sini, when I interviewed him, he told me that they were using very complicated technology to analyze countless cell phone data. Um, all the cell phone data they were able to collect from that time, they got dumps on several towers, and they were trying to identify patterns within this data using these advanced algorithms that I couldn't even begin to try yeah. to understand or explain. Um, so we know they're doing that. Unclear how successful they've been. I don't think very, because here we sit. And um, another thing they are trying to do now under the current police chief, his name's Rodney Harrison, he's from uh, New York City, there's like a new mega task force he's claimed to have put together, which involve um, federal, state, and local law enforcement finally, once and for all, working hand in hand to try to solve this thing. Now, what are they holding back, though? We all know that th this case really starts, and, and so much of the attention on this case often has been about Shannon Gilbert, because they, the, Shannon Gilbert is the one that um, went missing from Oak Beach. She was uh, on a date. She's a, she was a sex worker. Eventually, her body was found. They called it a death of mis misadventure. Um, they have not released her 911 call. We have pressed them about that, why they have not released it. Um, they've said it's part of the open investigation, one of the detectives did, and then we pressed them and said, well, no, it, she, she, nobody's connecting her to this case, and you, you say she died of a misadventure. They still haven't released it yet. Right, and that being said, we don't know what else they haven't yeah. released. Yeah. Uh, we know that there was a glove. They, they had it on a website. It was a mistake. Their tech person really sucks. That website was a disaster. All these things we weren't supposed to see, yeah. we saw. And so we know there's countless other pieces of evidence that they're not showing to us. And it's unclear why. Yeah. Because if they're doing things like using cell phone data to try to solve this thing, they've been sitting on this physical evidence for over, for 12 years now, and they're no closer. So obviously it's not gonna hinder the investigation to release it. Yeah. So we struggle to understand why they continue to hold it back. Yeah, so when we interviewed the, both the police commissioner, who are both gone now, they're, they're, they've both been replaced, and the DA, we were just like, can you release the 911 call? Can you release the, uh, the, what they would call the Asian male uh, dressed in women's clothing? You, don't, you didn't identify this person, but somebody could I identify that, that clothing and get to that identity and could have gotten closer to the killer, and you didn't use that and you didn't utilize the public. And then the, one, the only piece of video as we, uh, that we know of was video of Megan Waterman, um, one of the victims, leaving a, the, uh, the hotel in Hop Hog, which would have been the last time that anybody really had seen her until she was, her body was found. 